It's Elise and Jessica. She is in the jungles of, where are you at? Portland, Oregon. I, it's very jungly there. How, how could I have not guessed that? <laughs> right, exactly. Tropical wonderland up here in the Pacific yeah, Northwest, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I'm in good old Canada, where it is actually pleasant, beautiful weather. And we mm. are today talking about meetings. So if you haven't had a good meeting in a long time, raise your hand. What all of you that are listening in live and in the replay, going to meetings, what's your experience? You've been talking about this a long time. How did you get into meetings and making them not suck? Tell me a little bit about why you are a specialist in this topic, Elise. Yeah, I got into meetings and making them not suck because I was into collaboration and I was mm -hmm. into working with teams to get things done, right? Like we come together as a group and we want to achieve something. And at some point that involves everybody getting into a room or on a call at the same time to figure out what it is we are going to do. And while that always seems so simple, it should be straightforward. It never, never is. So mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to work as a collaboration software designer for large organizations and found that these giant organizations were bringing together people from all over the world um, and they would run these meetings where they'd walk out with really complex decisions. Hmm. No, I mean, they were actually, they were not exciting meetings, right? But they were effective. Oh, and then oh, I went good. back to, they were effective. They achieved oh. what they needed to achieve. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it, you know, layers, right? So that's the other thing that makes this really interesting work is that what do you talk about? Well, do you talk about the mechanics and the agendas and all of that kind of thing? Or do you talk about the emotions and engagement and personality differences, right? There's layers of, mm. of stuff that gets to be fun to investigate mm. once you get into it. Mm. Um, and what I found when I went back to my office is that uh, by default, people do none of it, right? <laughs> what do we get by default? <laughs> you know, whoever's Whoever's in charge, whoever's loudest walks in, tells us how it's going to be, says any questions, you know, eh, eh. right. Hi. So I got into fixing it because I, I saw that it was possible and that when it was possible, uh, everything about work changes, right? Mm -hmm. nice. When it's delightful, work becomes mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, wow. Are we going for delightful too? Why not? At least, you know, maybe... <laughs> Once a week, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like keep it fresh. I guarantee meetings will be delightful once a week <laughs> or no, the whole work. Day. <laughs> yeah. So this idea, how much in, you're going to share some of these, but your pre during and after habits to run a successful meeting. How much of this is focused on stopping the loudest guy because it's mostly a guy um, in my experience from taking up the space and not having equal speaking time or distribution of ideas from the quieter people? Like, is that like one of your main draws and your drives or is that just like one part of why meetings kind of suck? I think it's, um, I think it's a symptom of an unplanned, undesigned meeting, mm -hmm. right? So that particular problem um, shows up when none of the rest of the work has been done, right? Okay. There are other problems that show up too. Uh, mm -hmm. So so if I see that happening, I'm gonna go, okay, you know, this is, this is a team that has um, defaulted into the bad habits they picked up when they earlier in their career. And, you know, they've got an organization or, um, or a team where whoever's in charge figures out how to do things and that person's just doing whatever they saw the person before them do. And it's this cascading slope of um, lowest common denominator, uh, you know, least uh, good practice. Um, and, and you'll see this reflected in like, like the science and the research and whatnot. They go into organizations and they say, oh, well, this is what happens in meetings. And it certainly is if there's been no training, uh, no design, no structure, no facilitation. Well, um, okay, if we say it like this, if we think about it, like what actually goes well if there's no design, no structure, no anticipation, nothing, your exercise, your relationships, your dinner, nothing turns out well with 
all of that. So of course they suck. It's not even an insult and it's not even a surprise. It's just like, we'll put some effort right. into making it efficient and helpful and fair. I don't know. You're right. And, you know, I mean, like I have seen a lot of um, egotistical folks, right? There's actually a, a research term for it. You call it the meeting blind spot, right? So whoever's got the the highest positional authority, mm -hmm. historically, it's tend to be a guy, but I've seen women do it too. So let's, mm -hmm. let's be equal opportunity in our bad behavior. <laughs> yeah. uh, whoever, whoever's in charge has this jerk. tendency to Right. Yeah. Nobody's got a lock on jerk. Um, <laughs> has a has a tendency to believe that whatever it is they're doing is probably great, right? Because there are these um, these key qualities that you need to have in place for a meeting to to be a great meeting. Uh, the okay. first is which it needs to be relevant. Right. It has to be something that you consider to be an effective meeting. It's relevant to your job. It helps you achieve something that matters mm -hmm. to you in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so the boss who called the meeting every time. Right. Check. <laughs> and, this, and the second one is you have to have um, you have to participate. Not just. Uh huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like you have a driving voice in making that go. Driving voice is very different than like, do you all agree? So you have to slot in that every single person has a, a, an amount of time or how do you get their input? Do you have like pieces of paper that they're allowed to input or pre or for or a Google doc that they share? How do you get all of them in? It really depends on the meeting, right? So right. let's say you're facilitating, um, you know, a giant workshop, you know, that's going to be Everybody, it mean, doesn't matter, right? What kind of meeting you're running. Um, everybody participates actively in some way within the first five minutes. That's the rule. You Get know. them talking or doing something, not just listening. That's right. That's right. So all of the folks who are like, how do I help my team engage, right? And they they say, oh, well, you know, don't talk for more than 15 minutes or, you know, uh, have private coaching with them and find out how they feel. And like all of those things are not bad ideas. But the way that you get people to engage is give them something to do. Right? <laughs> they have to actively have something to engage with in the call. Uh, it's not not vague, not vague invitations. Yeah, not uh, not you know unless you're super entertaining. And I know you work with like TEDx folks, right? Like engagement there is you're worth listening to <laughs> more than anything else that might be on my phone, <laughs> but. But this mm -hmm. is different. Oh, pause. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if the main person doesn't put an effort to organize the meeting, mm -hmm. you as a subordinate of that person, what can you, you listening, do to in? encourage that person to make them better other than the, like throwing your brochure uh throwing a, at least his brochure on the boss's table and being like you suck she rocks what can they do if they aren't the boss because if they're listening to this they're probably not that person because they're interested in this topic right. those guys are not here watching unfortunately so we have to get the message to them so how can we subtly uh, create a movement against them and overpower them and take over the power <laughs> so, yeah, so there are a couple of options. It really depends on the, of course, on the personality, the pers person you're dealing with, right? There are some people who are um, truly oppressive personalities mm -hmm. and to then get in, in their face about how they do anything is, is a, is a risk that you get to make the, you get to do the math on whether that's the risk worth taking. Yeah. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that before I say, oh, blithely, clearly you should just do X, Y, Z. I want to acknowledge that everybody's in, an, in a unique situation. Yeah. Um, that said, most meeting leaders that I've encountered don't actually wish to run terrible meetings. Mm -hmm. That's nice. <laughs> you know, they, um, they don't have uh, better examples. They don't have better, they don't have mm -hmm. the training um, mm -hmm. and they don't have the time. So mm -hmm. the People who are most likely to have a calendar full of back-to-back -back meetings are those meeting leaders. The higher up you go in an organization, the more likely 80 to 85% of their calendar is blocked. 
Well, so when is it that they step back and do that work? Right? Holidays. So yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and that and that advances mental health even better. <laughs> no breaks at all. Just take your holiday and plan out a bunch of meetings. Mm -hmm. Um so the so so one thing is to to be aware of that context and to offer it as a as an expression of help and aid. Say, hey, I've been noticing that um that this is going well, but we're not quite hearing from all these people. Um, I'd be happy mm. to set this up next time, right? Because yeah. being the meeting leader and being the facilitator don't need to be the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so there's that. Um, you can also do things like say, "Hey, you know, uh, this is going great, but I've noticed we're not X, Y, Z. Would you mind if I asked a quick question?" Yeah. Cool. Would you mind if I ran a quick check, right? So okay. some Would of those that? things. Mm -hmm. could, hey, hey, can we try a thing? I saw a thing on the YouTubes about how, you know, this great yeah. company uh, did their status updates. Can we try that next week? Yeah. 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 Um, creative investigative energy. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I uh, said, so, you know, it, these are busy people. Offer them, offer yeah. them aid, offer, <clears throat> offer to try a solution hmm. on their behalf as an experiment that if it doesn't go well, they don't have to buy into. Yeah, and it's on you. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's on you. Yeah, it's an experiment. Um, yeah, yeah, I like it. And then, you know, use stories from companies they admire. Hmm. Do you have one story that you can share so that we can Google more or how would we know what those it did. stories are? Sure. So the, so if you work in tech, um, which a lot of people do, uh, you can look at stories from the big tech companies. Now in reality, a lot of big tech companies meetings are, are kind of funky. Um, but uh, Zapier, Amazon, uh, Google, all of those people are very clear about some of their meeting habits uh, and some of the ways in which they make meetings be more, more productive. So if that's your world, you find examples from them, right? Okay. If your world is purpose-driven, go to uh, Corporate Rebels and read stories about uh, self-managing companies and how they run their meetings, right? So look mm -hmm. at Zingerman's, look at um, Morning Star Tomatoes. Look at some of these other higher, right? Look at those companies. Mm -hmm. If you're government, um, you're going to go and you're going to look at, uh, depending on which part of government you are, you might look at some of the things that uh, Op4 is doing and some of the the joint joint task committees in the military do. <laughs> you might look at, you know, what the community service folks are doing, right? Mm -hmm. If you're sportswear, look at Lululemon because they have these really cool meeting vibe mm. <laughs> rituals, right? Okay. So there's stories in every industry mm. uh, and they're radically different stories. Huh. Is this what you read your children for bedtime stories? Yes, you, you know, know it, it, right? <laughs> no. It's like, no, no, it's no like, but my like... children are aware. <laughs> of good meetings. Yes, they they're are. like a hey, teacher. I, I, I can't guess your age, but I'm just visualizing your kids when they're and teenagers being like, hey, teacher, this classroom, this structure, uh, I suggest maybe we could try out something my mom teaches, which is uh, don't let the kid with the fastest arm answer all the questions, right? Because <laughs> that is all we know. That's all we've really known. It's funny. You, you're very compassionate. You're like, well, we've just never seen examples. So it's just a matter of education that there's a better way to do it. It's not like evil people, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, and it's not just a matter of education either. I don't want to be dismissive that like you can tell somebody how to do something better and they will. Um, mm -hmm. It's Again, it's mother <laughs> it's the social soup, right? It's the soup that you swim in. It's the it's the water um, that is your organization. Like if you don't see anybody else around you doing anything different. Mm -hmm. How do you say, hey, guess what? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna start our meetings with five minutes of silence while we contemplate <laughs> our larger purpose as a team. And that's a true practice that uh, that companies yeah. use. Yeah. And it's powerful, right? Like that's amazing. Um, 
You get your leadership team to soak in their purpose in silence before so they make strategic decisions, hmm. right? Hmm. But who suggests that? <laughs> who walks in? What about an anonymous then? I just talked to Jen Kick and he's coming to our Change Days Festival and he's talking about- Oh, fun. Did, you know him? Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. We did this thing at his uh, facilitation event in Berlin about a year ago, 10 months ago, where after the end of the workshop, and this is so not corporate, but just the idea where you take, it's come from liberating structures. Everybody writes down their feedback on a sheet of paper and then you throw it at each other like a snowball effect. And then people pick it up and read the feedback anonymously because we can't identify handwriting and it was thrown everywhere. You could figure it. they threw from that side of the room. That's probably theirs if you really want to figure it out. And so this idea of like making anonymous, like which companies in the world have like a box for feedback in the corner of the office where you can get heard? Who has that? Is that a thing? I'm not hanging on those offices. It is a thing. It is a thing. And it's a thing companies do um, in transition or that they'll do for like their giant meetings. Mm -hmm. um, like Salesforce had a period where they were changing their company wide meetings and they would do anonymous input and anonymous feedback. Um, anonymity is a double edged sword. Right. It, because if you're in a large enough pool that gives basically the trolls a place to come out and 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 sling. <laughs> <laughs> string troll troll fodder um and in small groups and then on it and 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 a minute and then a minute it god that's a hard word uh, that's <laughs> why you don't do it it's so hard to say right <laughs> right in groups of in groups of six or or fewer it doesn't work um yeah you yeah. know i know what your truth sounds like you know what my truth sounds like yeah. um so the, the, there are other situations in a corporate environment that work a little bit better. Yeah. The one that I like is um, called uh, return on time invested. Okay. Uh, we call it roti. <laughs> and as you're getting ready, to, getting ready to leave the meeting, you say, okay, on a scale of um, zero to five, how was this for you? With five being, wow, I'm so glad we did this. This, you know, really helped me get my work forward. Three being, yeah, it was fine. Mm -hmm. And zero being, this was a total waste of time. And not only was this a terrible meeting, but you've ruined the rest of my day. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I want you, I want you on, a, on a count of three, everybody at the same time, show me your rating. Three, two, really? one. And then everybody shows their rating. Wow. Cool. Anybody who's a, a three or below, you say, hey, okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, what can we do next time to improve your rating by one point? Yeah. yeah. Nice. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everybody's contributing, right? If yeah. somebody doesn't want to be confrontational, they'll go three, yeah. even though they really thought it was a one, you know, you're not mm -hmm. forcing them to out themselves. Um, mm -hmm. And the follow-up conversation is all about what can we do to make this better? Hmm. We, Oh, I love you. I was in um, Holland for a training and because the Dutch are so direct, lot, half of Europe is very direct, <laughs> right? Um, so the Dutch just go like, hey, like rate yourself, like rate how this meeting is, rate all of this. And the Dutch go, oh yeah. And the Germans and me go like, oh yeah, I'll be honest and I'll say it. And then mm -hmm. I talk to people afterwards and they're like, oh, I rated way higher than I really wanted because I'm afraid of the authority. And you're like, yeah, that happens all the time and we the authority the higher status people the maybe the extroverts that aren't afraid of confrontation or not that extroverts are afraid of it i don't know how mm -hmm. to explain that but the ones that aren't afraid of st saying something we don't even like think of it because i it's hard to walk in another person's shoes right so it's like to make something really anonymous to make some people actually feel heard without threat and the power differences it's it really takes delicate it's it's you should call it the art of meeting is that what you call it? <laughs> it it is delicate so which is why something if you're in a corporate environment in a team environment you know like the the snowball game is really great for mm -hmm. workshops especially with mm -hmm. um, mixed public groups right yeah. what's the risk there um a group of four or five a group of seven eight that meets all the time day after day mm -hmm. 
you know, you never know how such a thing might, might ping around and how that's going to interact. So yeah. techniques like, um, this, this return on time invested technique mm -hmm. or, um, you know, going around and saying, Hey, what's wrong with this plan as the leader, not mm -hmm. what do y'all think or any questions, but yeah. what's wrong with it? Like those shifts yeah. in questions and techniques have to be repeated. Yeah. Like you don't do it once you do it part of it over and over and then yeah. it builds a muscle right like that's yeah. meeting well is a social muscle that you have mm -hmm. to train and exercise I love meeting well that's beautiful i've never thought of that scent that expression meeting well because it is a verb and it's called the noun the meeting meeting well. wow it's awesome how to meet well ah mind blown okay beautiful <laughs> You're lovely. Easy to talk to you. I'm sure you are a Thank wonderful you. facilitator. I found you through the, the 12 top places where facilitators should hang out. You were recommended last week. And so I, I just said, hey, let's meet everyone who's watching. And I invited all of your friends and my friends. So I see Marta. Love the suggestions that you put out there. And anyone Hi, else who's Marta. watching? <laughs> uh, follow Follow Elise for ideas. You got a newsletter. You got a book. What do you, what do you want to tell the people how to stay in contact with you? The thing I think people should definitely check out. I'm going to put this message in the private chat and maybe you can share it out. Um, I am helping co-host a large event for the event organizing and facilitation community this Wednesday. Ooh. Um, and one of the one of the things that went out before that was this list of 54 high impact engagement activities and formats from facilitators and organizers around the world. So it's completely Bye. free event, completely free resource. And there are some really cool um, yeah. engagement ideas in that PDF download. Like it. Okay, so this is live on LinkedIn, so you could, uh, you can send it to me or you could just post underneath this so that everyone who's listening right now can just scroll down. Ah. <laughs> okay, and, I'll put those in afterwards because I don't, I don't have that in front of me, but. Um, yeah, yeah, no, we're yeah, going to finish. Yeah, so those are. Yeah, that's super helpful. Thank you. And uh, from my side, everybody, we are doing the change days. It's an unconference and we got the open space going on. It's in Barcelona, October 25th to 27th. The people who can come, some of them can come, some of them cannot come. I've been interviewing about 40 of them. Uh, Lisa's is my number 42 for the last month. My summer has been busy learning. So busy. I'm so busy. I should be the smartest, best facilitator in the world right now. And yet the whole point of our conference, unconference, is that it's not knowledge or mindset that changes people. It's habits. It's the behavioral changes. It's actually doing it even when it's uncomfortable. And so my facilitation hasn't changed yet because I haven't done anything yet because it's holidays. So it's really interesting to like talk about the do this before, during, and after your meeting, like practical. And I really appreciate that you're helping the community with that. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have a great okay. event. Thank you. See ya. Bye.